unit vectors can have derivatives. Now, x hat and y hat don't, because no matter what you do, x hat points in the x direction, y hat points in the y direction. But what if you're not in xy coordinates? What if you're in r theta coordinates, polar coordinates? If you're in this location, r hat would point that way and theta hat would point that way. If you're in this location, r hat points this way and theta hat points that way. If you're up here, r hat points this way, theta hat points that way, they're changing. They depend on theta. They don't depend on r though, because if you simply slide further out from the origin, r hat and theta hat don't change. They just move, but they didn't rotate. We can talk about the partial derivatives of r hat and theta hat with respect to r and with respect to theta. And as I just said, they don't change when you change r, but they do change when you change theta. It turns out that the partial of r hat with respect to theta is theta hat. You're turning in the theta direction. That's how r hat is changing. And as for theta hat, if you change theta, it's essentially turning inward, so you get negative r hat. The easiest way to actually derive the derivatives of r hat and theta hat is to write them out in Cartesian form, because we know the Cartesian unit vectors don't change, and that'll simplify our calculus. So r hat is actually cosine theta x hat plus sine theta y hat. So if you take the derivative of r hat with respect to theta, you get negative sine theta, that's the derivative of cosine, x hat doesn't change, that was the point of using Cartesian, and sine becomes cosine. But that's exactly theta hat, so this is theta hat. Meanwhile, if you take the derivative of theta hat with respect to theta, derivative of sine is cosine, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and you can see that that is the opposite of r hat. And there's your instant proof that the derivative of r hat with respect to theta is theta hat, and the derivative of theta hat with respect to theta is negative r hat. And you need those, because if you're trying to take the derivative of, say, r r hat, that's actually a product rule. In Cartesian coordinates, it wouldn't be. You'd just pull out the x hat and just go ahead and find the derivative of r, and you'd be done. The derivative of that would be dr dt times r hat plus r dr hat dt. This itself, we were talking about changes with respect to theta. We're talking about changes with respect to time. We need another chain rule. So dr hat dt is really dr hat d theta d theta dt. dr hat d theta can be theta hat, which means if we use dot for time derivative, dr dt would be r dot r hat plus r, and then dr hat dt would actually be theta dot, or omega, theta hat. That is velocity in polar coordinates, because you can have velocity because you are changing your r or because you're changing your theta. In spherical coordinates, we have r hat, theta hat, and phi hat. For reference, here are the unit vectors for spherical coordinates written out in Cartesian components. It's a right-handed coordinate system, so red, green, blue. Red is that way, green is that way, so blue is in fact into the board as I have drawn. If you change the value of r, then none of these change orientation. So the partial derivatives with respect to r are all zero. If you change theta, you're moving like this. So the r and the theta hat change, but the phi is still into the board, so the partial phi with respect to theta is zero. When you start swinging around, that's when you start getting all three of them changing. And so with respect to phi, all three of them have non-zero derivatives. If you write out the conversion from spherical coordinates to Cartesian coordinates and take the derivatives, then you can see that these relations are true. It works the same way it works for polar coordinates.